Hey, how are you doing today? Thank you very much for tuning in. And today we're going to cover a silent day. Now, what is a silent day? It's something we've invented here at Why Not 3 and it's something that can really get your focus back and really relieve your stress. So it came out of necessity for me and it was very necessary for me to get something like this because I was constantly performing, constantly optimal productivity as much as possible in as little as time as possible, constantly reading books, falling asleep with podcasts, and then waking up really early in the morning, going for a jog, and doing what everybody was saying in high performance world to do. Now, as you might have noticed, not everybody can keep this up. Actually, when I started meeting the top CEOs, almost nobody can keep it up. What they actually do is what athletes do as well. They take a rest. And this is something they kind of tend to leave out when saying uh, what their routines are. However, you can pick it up in some books, like The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People mentions sharpening the saw as the last chapter. There are other authors like Darren Hardy that says that you really need to relax, but somehow people tend to gloss over that. So today I'm gonna to tell you what our silent day is, the necessity and how we invented it to really start making impact in as short, as time as possible. So in based on the research we did in our clients, everything is influenced by this silent day. So if you don't do the silent day or you tend to miss it for a couple of weeks, which sometimes I tend to do as well because I have projects in, in the other company I founded, and then suddenly a lot of stress symptoms start coming back. So the way you do a silent day is actually very, very simple. No matter what, you choose one day in the week. Maybe you've heard about it before, but in the Bible, they also mention to pick one day a week. I got it from John Gray's book, where he refers obviously to the Bible. And you pick one day a week, you can choose a weekend, you can choose a weekday depending on your working schedule, of course. So my silent day is always on Sunday. And I always pick a time so the moment I wake up till 6 p.m., that's always my silent day. However, I always start eating at 5 p.m. So I also tend to do detoxing on that day, which means I don't eat the entire day. And at 5, at 5 p.m., I start eating again. That way I have an hour to really prepare nice food for myself and enjoy my food before I really dive into the work at six, uh, at six o'clock. And the reason I do six o'clock and not the entire day is because, again, if you really love what you do, then you're gonna be a little bit of a workaholic, right? And you can't stop being and loving your work. So what you have to do is know yourself. I know myself. If at the end of the day I haven't done any work, I won't feel comfortable with myself. That's why 6 p.m. is my silent day time. So now that you've set that date and you've set the time and you've planned it in, it's very important to be patient and consistent. Consistency wins in this game. If you're consistent and doing this for a period of time, after two or three months, you will finally start seeing results. So if you don't see results right away, be patient. Because I told you in the beginning of all the videos, to be in Why Not 3, to really get the principles down, you need to have discipline. This is a long-term game. This is a marathon. This is not a sprint. If you really want to have and achieve this work-life balance, you need to have the discipline to be patient and consistent with whatever you do. Now, tip number two. On the silent day, you can never, never, ever use electronics. You don't check anything. It's for that reason that my silent day is on Sunday. Because I know that most of the stores don't work on Sunday and most of uh, the employees don't work as well. So on Sunday, everything goes off. And because at 5 p.m. I still don't use electronics, I can still eat, enjoy myself, actually pay attention to my food. And then at six o'clock, I turn on the button and all the electronics spring to life. So no electronics. Yes, it gets very boring on silent days, so obviously you can still read books. And it's for that reason that obviously I'm writing a physical book and not just a simple ebook or a Kindle version. Because on my silent day, I want to hold my book in my hand and do the exercises that are in the book every week. Because that way I can reflect as well. And that brings me to point three. 
which is reflect on this day, use calibration tools to really look at your life and see if you're living up to your core values, see if you're doing what you should be doing for that week and see if what you're doing in the next week is gonna bring you closer to your goals. Because this silent day is where you're gonna catch yourself. If you're not performing the way you should be performing or if you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, you're not gonna catch it in the middle of chaos and in the middle of the week. You're gonna catch it on Sunday, on your silent day. And that way at six o'clock, when all the electronics spring back to life, you can start calling the people that you should be calling. You can go to the gym. You can do all of the stuff that you were postponing to do in the beginning of the week. So those are my three tips for silent day. I really hope that you can try to implement this into your life if you're struggling with stuff. What if you could really start doing this silent day and maybe in two or three months you would have that optimal balance, imagine that. So that's something I can give, uh, give to you. So again, a uh, quick summary. The first tip is pick a date, be consistent and patient. It takes two or three months to really see results. Two, no electronics, no matter what, just read a book, a physical book, no Kindle. And three, after you've been patient, after the electronics, you can do some calibration tools, you can see if you're living up to your core values and you can see if you're living up to the goals that you envisioned for yourself. Now, if you wanna know more, just subscribe to the YouTube channel or sign up to the email list because in the link down below, which you'll see is also a blog article that refers to more tips. So if you wanna get updated through the email list about these blog articles, or if you wanna read more tips, just go to the link down below where I'll link everything I just talked about and I'll see you in the next video. Number one mistake is that people don't take breaks. What do I mean with that? I always see some people who take breaks, but I mean specifically breaks to stage shift. What is stage